Okay, so this is how I ship out my fig trees. All right, we got two different kinds that I root. One is in the bag and the other one is in the pot. One in the bag is a lot simpler and that's why I like it more. But uh, the one in the pot, what I do is I take a piece of cardboard here and I cut out a square the size of the top of the pot. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to not let the soil that's inside the pot fall out during shipping and expose the roots. So on top of cutting it out so that it just fits in very snug, I like to notch it so that the stem has an area in the middle. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to tape that so that it doesn't fall out because no matter how tight it is, during shipping, things are getting rocked and moved back and forth. That could very well pop out. So you want to put a piece of tape in and you want to give it a good taping so that it doesn't fall out, making sure the tape doesn't make contact with the stem and damage your wood. I like to press it in so that soil has no room to move and I like to tape it from all sides because if just one side slips, the soil will start leaking out from there. Now you got to bring a box that is the right size. Now, figs are very flexible, but a fig this size, you don't want to bend the hard wood because that's just going to move the roots and start tearing things apart. But the soft green growth on the top can bend no problem and very easily. Now, the last thing you want is for that stem to be rocking back and forth. So some added support. If you have any of these bubble bags, anytime I get a shipment from Amazon or anywhere else, I always like to save these bags. Now, if you don't have these kind of bags, what you can do is crumple some newspaper and it should serve almost the same purpose. Your goal here is that the stem is not rocking back and forth during transport. Now this guy, and this is why I love shipping these bags. First of all, you don't have to worry about the soil falling out. All you do is you put an elastic band, which should have been there to begin with if you followed my rooting video, which you'll find a description to down below. So you got your elastic band protecting your soil from coming out and nothing is going to move in that bag. And now what you do is you simply lay it down on the side and the same way you get some tape and you securely tape it to the edge of the box so that it doesn't move and make sure you use more than one piece of tape to secure it so that it's nice and tight and just like the other one we supported the stem with the bubble bag there i like to do the same with this one and again if you don't have bubble bag then maybe uh, you could just use some crumpled newspaper. Now with the soil or planting medium that's in the pots or the bag, make sure you don't have it too wet. First of all, all that water is going to make your box heavy and cost you or your customer more money for shipping. And the second thing, is they don't actually need so much water when they're in that box because there's no sun that is hitting the plant and causing photosynthesis to make your tree need water. All that as well is explained in my fig rooting video and again the link is below. Things don't move. 
Now I like to get some crumpled newspaper or again, any deliveries I get from Amazon or anywhere else, they usually have this beautiful crumpled brown paper, which I always save so that I can use for shipping later on. Just pad that on the top so that there's no room for anything to move anywhere before you close the box. You then simply tape up the box, making sure that it's not going to open up. And then you need to get all your dimensions, okay? So I like to use centimeters because they're a little bit more accurate and you can save a little bit more money when you go smaller. And I just write down all the measurements right on the box. This way I don't have to worry about them and I keep them in one place. And usually once I print my shipping label, I cover that area with the shipping label. So it doesn't affect anything. Now you need yourself a nice digital scale and I like to set it up in grams again, a little bit more accurate. And when you place your box on there, make sure that it's not touching anything else so that you get an accurate reading. Okay, so here's my reading. It's bouncing between 648 and 650, so I always go with 650. The last thing you want is the post office or whatever you're using for shipping telling you you put too low of a weight and then they reject your, your package. Now, the last thing that I want to tell you is instead of just grabbing this box and walking into a post office and paying the high rate, what you want to do is you want to go online and set up an account with either Canada Post or any of the shipping companies. Uh, if you're in the States, set up an account with US Post. They have the similar uh, kind of situation where when you have an account, you get much cheaper rates. So you set that up, you go online, you punch in all your dimensions and your weight, and it allows you to pay online and print shipping label right there. You then continue to put your label on the box and you get your label right from your own printer tape it up nice and you take your box either to the post office or if you're using one of the shipping companies there'll be an option for them to come and pick it up and also be careful sometimes if they come and pick it up they charge you more money than if you drop it off and a lot of times these guys have an office somewhere right near you uh, inside a little store or a little strip plaza and you could save a good amount of money by simply dropping it off. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and leave me any comments if you have any questions.